Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma. Before we jump into today's topic, thank you again for all your subscriptions. Thank you for following us. Thank you for sharing us. And please continue to do so as we continue to grow this channel. Well, let's jump in on the topic at hand. We all saw what happened last night. We all saw what Caitlin Clark did. 19 assists. 19. Forget about the win or the loss. She had 19 assists. Her last assist tied the game at 93. She probably should have had 25 assists if her teammates could make layups consistently. If her teammates could make jump shots consistently. No one's asking them to be 100%. No one's expecting someone to make a layup when there's three people on them. But when you have no one on you and you're uncontested next to the rim, your job is simple. Make a layup. Lexi Hall blew one. Aaliyah Boston, who played a great game, she still blew one. Although, albeit she was fouled on her hip, it was a bunny layup, and she hit it off the back iron. And I guarantee if you asked her, she would tell you she should have made the shot. Countless by Melissa Smith. Unable to get to the rim and finish at the rim. Getting her shot blocked when there's no one there. Because she moves so slowly. And then you look at Lexi Hall and you look at Katie, Katie, Katie Lou Samuelson. Both players who are paid their money to make jump shots. And neither of them can make one when they're wide the freaking hell open. Lexi Hall, I swear to God, is always open in the corner. And she constantly misses. Constantly. She hit one last night and it was shocking. But she also had three others that were wide open that she missed. And she doesn't miss by a little. She misses by a lot. And if you want to look, go dig dig deeper into them, she's a 28.1% three-point shooter. Why is she standing behind the three-point line if she can't shoot yet is expected to make three-point shots? She shoots 34 per, under 34% from the field. <clears throat> Samuelson shoots about 34% from three. Again, why are these two considered shooters and can't shoot? Lexi Hull. <laughs> Lexi Hull, in the last five games... Forget five. Let's look at more than five. Let's look at it. In the last five games, she's two for 12 from three. One for one, over five, over two, one for four. This is, goes hand in hand with her getting more playing time, by the way, because she was getting a lot less playing time earlier this season. Now, Katie Lou Samuelson, the last nine games, is nine for 41 from three. And I would venture to guess that 98% of those shots were absolutely wide open looks. <clears throat> so that's why I say Caitlin Clark could have had 25 assists if they can make basic wide open jump shots and not even at a hundred percent clip, just make them at a 40% clip. They're wide open. Or, and, and make layups. Like this is, this is the, nine of Aaliyah Boston's 11 made baskets yesterday were, layups on assists from Caitlin Clark or passes from Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark had a WNBA record yesterday for assists in a game. She's a rookie. She now leads the WNBA in assists, averaging 8.2 assists per game. My guess is by the end of the year, she will average over nine assists. I don't think she'll get to 10. Because I think that's just too much of a gap. I mean, she'd have to have prop. I mean, I mean, it's possible. 
She's averaging over 10 assists. She, she averaged over 10 assists for the month of uh, June or July, whatever, the, the 30-day period. It's actually July, yeah. She's averaged over 10 assists for the month of July. Could you get to 10? I don't know. I mean, I, I think um, I think the all-time mark for a season is 10 assists per game. Assist leader per game in a season. Um, I think it's 10. I could be wrong, but I saw Courtney Vanderslip did an average 10 assists in a game uh, for single season. But, I mean, career-wise... Vandersloot's the all-time leader with 6.7. So Caitlin Clark's already ahead of that in her first year. It took Courtney Vandersloot eight seasons to average as many assists in a game as Caitlin Clark was doing as a rookie. These are facts. Oh, yeah. Did I forget? She accounted for 66 points yesterday. That's a WNBA record. Between her points and assists, she accounted for 66 points. She is the best point guard in the league. She is the best guard in the league. She might be already the best point guard in the history of the WNBA. She is the bona fide rookie of the year. The, the discussion for rookie of the year has to be over now. If you had a thought, a doubt, and you don't think that a 24 and 19 game should have been a 2020 game if people can make layups and wide open shots, but a 24 and 19 game break the record all time for assists in a game. I don't know what will convince you. Clearly, there's something wrong with you. But the the, the run for rookie of the year is over. Caitlin Clark's gonna win the rookie of the year in a landslide. I believe the Vegas odds now are minus 2,000. Vegas does not create odds to lose. They do not create odds to lose. <clears throat> and I will tell you this. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Asia Wilson might be the best player in the WNBA right now. But she won't be in three years. She might not be in two years. Because as Caitlin Clark puts weight on her body and learns to shoot a floater, Caitlin Clark will be the best player in the WA, WNBA by year four of her career. And right now, she won't win MVP. She will not. But she will get votes. She will be a top five vote getter for MVP this year. You don't have to believe me if you don't want to. Caitlin Clark is doing things that have ne has never have never has never been seen before in the WNBA. She is by far the most important player to her team than any player in the league, including Asia Wilson to the Las Vegas Aces. If you take Caitlin Clark off of the Indiana Fever, the Indiana Fever right now would not be 11 and 15. They'd be 2 and 24. You go look at the scores of their games. They have never they have not blown anyone out. Defensively, they're atrocious. They do not play together. Help side defense is awful. They win games because that woman is nonstop pushing pace, pushing tempo to get them easy baskets. There is not even a question right now who the most important player is for her particular team. That's Caitlin Clark to the Indiana Fever. And that's discounting and not even looking at the impact of attendance, viewership, and all that stuff. I'm not even considering that. Considering that, I'm talking about straight up. Basketball. Oh, the Indiana Fever have a few bad losses. Yes, they do. They have some losses that were very disappointing. But current, right now, the Indiana Fever are 11 and 15. When they played 16, 26 games last year, last year they were 7 and 19. They are four games better today with Caitlin Clark than they were last year. 
Last year they finished at 13 and 27. I'm they, this is a 40 game season. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to go on record saying they're going to finish at 500. They'll finish with 20 wins. They're going to go 9 and 5 in the second half. They'll finish at 20 and 20 at least. At least. I think the break is going to help them a great deal. Not from a coaching perspective, because I think their coach sucks. Christy Size is the worst coach I've ever seen. I've never seen a, a, a coach blow talent as much as this woman does. But from a perspective of Caitlin Clark's going to get off her feet, get a couple of weeks of rest while the Olympics go on, and she's going to come out juiced. Not technically juiced on PEDs, but juiced, like energized. She will be energized as hell. She's going to have plenty of energy. And if you thought she was pushing the ball now, she will push it at a higher pace when they come back. I think they'll get better because I think they're going to get some more practice time together to prepare the record, the schedule. I mean, yeah, they've blown a couple of games against bad teams that they should never have blown, but their schedule overall is very, very, it's very, very, not easy, but very. It's not a. It's not the difficult schedule they played to start the year. They play. They play home. Batman, shut up! They play home games versus Phoenix and Seattle to open up. They go to Minnesota again, where they just won, which is basically Iowa North. Um, Atlanta, Connecticut's a tough one. They'll have Chicago and Dallas again. The, the Sparks, Minnesota again, Atlanta, Vegas twice. They got, I mean, most of their games are against teams that are under 500. Now, obviously, that hasn't proven to be the, an elixir for them because they've lost some games to team, three games to teams, three games to teams that are under 500 in the last in their last uh, 15. But overall, they have a very promising schedule to get to being nine and four, nine and five the rest of the way. So I will go on record and sit here and tell you they're going to be a 20 and 20 team. They'll make the playoffs, whether they're a seven or a six seed. I don't know yet. They definitely will not be an eight at 20 and 20. But Caitlin Clark is the most important player to her team in the WNBA. And Caitlin Clark will get MVP votes. She might be number two in the league. She might finish right behind Asia Wilson. She might. I'm not sure, but she might. People are paying attention. What she's doing on this court, on the court right now, is nothing short of remarkable. But I'm not surprised. This is what I expected from her. I expected her to be a dominating player in the WNBA immediately. And she pretty much has. If you defended her the way you defend everybody else, she'd be averaging over 20 points a game. But I'm not going to expect you to let her have it. However, we, we, know what, we know what's what. We know what's what. We know who this is. They know who this is. They game plan their game plans around her every single time. Kaylin Clark is going to come back energized at the, after the break. She's going to win the rookie of the year. It will not even be, it's not going to be close. She'll get every vote. If she doesn't get a first place vote from somebody, that person should lose their vote. And she'll get votes for MVP. She'll be top five for MVP this league because she is that fucking good. And she is doing that damn much. But Caitlin Clark is the best point guard in the WNBA. Caitlin Clark is the best guard in the WNBA. And Caitlin Clark is probably right now already the best point guard in the history of the WNBA. And that includes the likes of Sue Bird. It does. She's doing right now stuff that Sue Bird never did, and she's doing it as a rookie. She's doing it as a rookie. Sue Bird, career assist per game, 5.6. Sue Bird never averaged more than six and a half assists. I'm sorry, she averaged 7.1 assists one season in her career. Sue Bird never averaged 15 points a game in her career. She career of 11.7. Sue Bird, I, I mean, we can go down the line here. 
Sue Bird never averaged more than point two blocks per game. Caitlin Clark's averaging almost a block a game. Sue Bird never averaged more than three rebounds, three point three rebounds a game. Caitlin Clark's averaging about six. Caitlin Clark's rookie season is better than Sue Bird's best season in her entire career. Caitlin Clark is the best point guard in the history of the WNBA right now. I said it. You don't like it? Double middle finger to you, all right? Let me know what you think in the comments. Come on now.